pay attention and take notes. Now, again, I'm just, just kind of sharing from my personal experiences exactly what I did during Barber College. I, again, I hope it's helpful. So listen, I wrote down everything, everything. I was the dude who was always taking notes. You know, maybe that was what my college education taught me or something. And I just was used to being in class and taking a bunch of notes. But I took such detailed notes. Every single chapter of the Milady book, I wrote very detailed review answers. And I did that because it was like, this is going to be my study guide. So I was like, if I cheat myself now, I'm just cheating myself later. If I don't trust my notes that they're going to do what they need to do for me, when I get to 1,200 hours and I start really prepping for the exam, and I look back at my notes and I'm like, yo, these notes are weak. I need to redo them. Like, you don't want to do that. Put the hard work in early so that at the end you can reap the benefit, right? So I took very detailed chapter review notes. And those, again, became my study guides. So we would take a test for us. I'm not sure what you guys do. But for us, we would take a test probably once every couple of weeks, right? We'd, we'd, read, we'd study a chapter and then we'd take a test. We'd study a chapter and we'd take a test. And I wrote down my test score for every single one. Percentage wise, I was concerned about the percentage because if 75% passes this, the exam, that was my mark. I just got to hit 75%. I would write down the chapter next to it. I'd be like, okay, I got a, you know, 85 or I got a 75 or I got a 60, you know, whatever it is, write it down because you're trying to identify later. What are your weaknesses? What chapters do you need to focus on? So write down your test scores and track yourself, okay? The other thing that I did was I did bookkeeping too. This, isn't, this has nothing to do with the barber exam, but obviously I was, I was, this, is, this is just something that I did. Every single client that I cut at school, I had a piece of paper. I wrote down the date. I wrote down their name. I wrote down the service, whether it was a, a, you know, a gentleman's cut or you know, a low skin ball fade or all sheer haircut or, you know, ball fade with a beard lineup, you know, taper, whatever. I wrote down every single service and then I wrote down how much they tipped me. <laughs> now it wasn't much. <laughs> the joke in Barber College is like another day, another $2. <laughs> but I wrote down every single tip. I did because I wanted to start getting in the habit of bookkeeping because I knew one day when I get out of this, I got to keep track of my book. I got to keep track of my, how, how much money am I making? You know, how many clients am I actually seeing? right? What, how much money can I actually make in this business? Because again, if I'm CEO, if I'm the businessman, I better know things about my business. I better know about my cash flow, how much money's coming in, how much money I'm actually making in this business. So anyways, all I to say, pay attention and take notes. Um, now, the next one, I just kind of alluded to it a little bit, but it's identify your strengths and weaknesses. So kind of recapping, I knew my why, I Googled it, I have the idea of who the NIC is and what they're asking me. Three, I'm paying attention. I'm taking really detailed notes. I'm not cheating myself. I'm putting in 100% because I know that the work I put in now, I'm going to reap the benefits later. And as I'm doing this, I'm identifying my strengths and my weaknesses. Now, it's like a ball fade. Here's my story. I, don't judge me for this. Don't judge me. I feel like my, my, barber, my barber classmates judge me for this because I've been cutting hair. But um, I was cut, my clientele weren't really looking for ball fades. Anyways, it's like a ball fade. I had never given a ball fade before, before barber college. Never given one. It was my weakness and I knew it. I asked my instructor for help. Guy sits in my chair. He's like, yo, let me get a ball fade. And I like looked at him. I'm like, oh, shoot. All right. Hey, yo, instructor, can you come help me out real quick? He came by and he walked me through. I watched a bunch of videos. You know, I watched classmates. I asked them for different techniques. You know, I'd shadow people. And I took, and then the, the mentality that's what I'm saying is I knew my ball fade was my weakness and I attacked it with tenacity. And that's what barbers do right? Especially with our barber skills. We are perfectionists. We want to figure it out. If we feel like there's a weakness in our barbering game, we know what we need to do in order to get better at it, right? And there's an amazing community that we have, amazing professionals that are on YouTube doing tutorials and everything, Instagram. I love that about our industry. And we could do the research to get better. So we know what it's like to do research. We know how to get better. We know how to identify those weaknesses and, and try to turn them into strengths, right? Or even if we have a strength, become an expert at them. And people rely on us for whatever cut it is. People are like, yeah, I know I'm going to get hooked up by, you know, whoever, because that's their thing. Now, all that to say is you got to take that same mentality to the textbook. 
take that same mentality of the textbook. Whatever your weakness is, it's okay. Identify what it is. Whatever chapter is hard for you, there's no shame. Identify what that is. And then you want to come and you want to come with a plan to get better at it. So you want to take that determination to the textbook. Now, identifying your strengths and weaknesses is so important before you start getting into the latter half of barber college in 1200 to 1500 hours. Okay. By the time you've hit 1125 hours, you better know your why you better have Googled it. You better have taken great paid attention and taken great notes. And you better know what your strengths and weaknesses are. When you hit 1125 hours, those top four things, you better be there by now is what I'd say. Now, why? Because you're coming into the home stretch. Why 1125 hours? I don't know what you guys do at your guys' college, but for us at 1125, you can pre-apply for your exam date. You can pre-apply. You can send in your application and then they'll give you, but you can't do it until you hit 1125 hours. For me, it's like, there's a big celebration at our school. You know, you, you fill out the application and you send it in the mail. Everybody comes outside, they cheer for you. It's a big deal. And then from there, it's like, okay, now it's time to really check in and let's get going on this exam getting ready for this exam, right? Kicking into a different gear. Now, why am I saying this is because this next point, a vision without a plan is just a dream. When you hit 11...